Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where we are going to test the performance of various different devices on Genshin Impact 4.0's update for this brand new map, Fontaine. And uh, yeah, new map means more graphical updates and also gonna be much more taxing I suppose. And that is what we are gonna test exactly today. So this is the M1 iPad Air with a very thin carbon fiber lookalike skin behind. And this is the Yelan I got from the brand new banner. And also we got other devices as well. This is the Honor Pad X9 that I got quite about a week or two ago. It uses the Snapdragon 685 if I'm not mistaken. So we're gonna test with this device as well, just to see how well it runs. And of course, we also have other Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 devices like uh, my Galaxy Z Fold 4 that I was using for the past year and then the Galaxy Z Fold 5 with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. This is a bit funnier because the render resolution is really high so I want to stress it out. And also we have of course the Galaxy S23 Ultra which also uses the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. And uh, we also want to try it well, with this absolutely massive Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra as well. So yeah, let's get started with the iPad first. So I have stated before in the comment section below that the M1 iPad Air will overheat with Genshin Impact at the highest graphical settings at 60fps because the cooling system just couldn't catch up and then it will thermal throttle and drop down to like I don't know 20 something fps which is very annoying as it happens quite frequently as well so if we head into the graphical settings menu we can see it is using highest 60 fps so let us just walk around play around and see how things go as you can see that is definitely a frame drop and uh, that happens actually because it needs to get to load the texture first for once. So the first time if it's loading these kind of textures, it will definitely lag a bit. And yeah, we can now swim in the game as well. I think that's a pretty neat addition in terms of features because, you know, this game, you can only go laterally that much. So it's good that they take things underwater. Kind of unique in a way. I have no idea where to go. Can't find it. Oh, it's up. Oh yeah, as a quick mention, I am running this on the iPad OS 17 Beta 4 as far as I remember. I'm not too sure. I'll leave all of the details up here. And so far so good. I don't have any other frame drops yet. And Ayaka, you can stop talking right now. So let me just take out our thermal camera and see what's the temperature because it doesn't feel warm at all. I am in an air conditioned room of 27 degrees Celsius. So let's just have a look here. So I'm not sure if the camera is overexposing, but the hotter spot is around this side here, which is at 42.6 degrees Celsius is what I'm reading right now. Actually quite hot, I would say. So yeah, every other part of the tablet is very cool, remains around 30-ish, around the bottom left side. And uh, yeah, around 32 at the bottom right side. Pretty cool, it's just that around this area right here is the hottest. I suppose that's where the chipset is. And as you can see here, it's still at about 41 degrees Celsius, 42, which is actually quite hot. Uh, let me just aim it properly. Yeah, as you can see here, 41.7, 41.5, it's somewhere around there. So yeah, so far so good. I think Apple did push an update to improve its thermal limit, I guess. Well, actually not thermal limit, more like it's uh, cooling performance and how it manages its performance so that it doesn't get overheating. And the back here is also rather high in terms of temperature. We were seeing about 44 degrees Celsius earlier. And since we turned off the game already, the temperature is starting to drop now, which is at around 42 degrees right now. So 
yeah, as you can see, it is rapidly dropping from 42 just now to 41 right now. So yeah, so yeah, overall performance on the M1 iPad Air on Fontaine, pretty decent. I still haven't experienced any frame drops or overheating yet. Okay, so now we are on the Honor Pad X9 and as you can see here, it, yeah, the specs on this tablet isn't exactly the best. So we have to lower the graphical settings to the absolute lowest. But we're still going to test it with 60 FPS just to get a smoother gameplay. And as for the language, yeah, we're using Japanese because why not? And uh, yeah, even going in and out of the menu, you can see there are some frame skips here and there. So let's just go around Fontaine and see how things go. Yeah, Ayaka does talk a lot, right? So let's hit there because I want to unlock the waypoint. You know what? Might as well collect the thing as well. Where is it? Oh, it's down there. Okay. I really do like the underwater levels now, by the way. Okay, so there's a shrine of the depths. I do have a key, so let's open that. And then we'll hit here. Yeah, there are lots of micro stutters here and there, which I really don't know why, but it happens. What the hell? What? Okay, so as you can see here, there are lots of stuttering and uh, I wouldn't say that this is a good gaming experience overall. And the reason why I play it at 60fps doesn't matter actually because uh, as you can see here, this is definitely less than 60fps. So even if I play it at 30fps, it doesn't matter. It will still be this laggy and also stutter a lot. So uh, yeah, I mean this chipset not really that good for Genshin Impact, especially at this new area here. Uh, the last time I showed the Snapdragon 685 or 695, I forgot, it's more or less performing the same anyway. Uh, yeah, the Sumeru Desert part was absolutely horrendous, so I think this chipset will be the same as well. I mean, as in for this tablet, so I really wouldn't recommend you to play Genshin Impact using this tablet, so there you have it. Okay, so even though this tablet doesn't offer that good of an experience playing Genshin Impact, we still have to take the temperature anyway. But uh, since this is a Snapdragon 685, if I remember correctly, the temperature will be very low because this chipset isn't going to produce much heat. So yeah, if we look around, we couldn't actually find any specific hotspots. The entire tablet seems to be real cool at about 30, 31 degrees Celsius at most. So. Yeah, this hotspot is because my hand was there and as you can see here at most it can go like 30 degrees celsius, 30 point something, that's about it. So I, I, I really have no worries in terms of temperature for these kind of tablets. Actually for all chipsets that are within the 6 whatever series, yeah, no worries in terms of temperature. So same goes for the back as well, so as you can see here. This part is noticeably hotter but it's like 29.9-30 degrees celsius. Yeah, everywhere else is real cool, so absolutely no worries in terms of temperature. So 
We're done with the Honor Pad X9. We'll move on with the next device, which is the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4. Z Fold 4. This is my personal unit of the Z Fold 4. So let's do it. Let's try it with the engine impact. And uh, I've already maxed out all of the settings. I've also enabled the alternate game performance management mode, as you can see in Game Booster. Go all the way down, labs, enabled here. I also got the game plugins for maximum render resolution. So let's just start. Uh, I will also take out a case because not everyone has this case and everyone will have a different case and the case actually affects the temperature as well. So as you can see here, the render resolution is 1920 by 1599, which is really high. So let's just jump into the game and let's see how it performs in Fontaine. Yeah, I really like this size of gaming a lot more because this is much more manageable, I suppose. So, uh, let's just again walk around in Fontaine and see what's going on. I'm gonna head to this waypoint. Um, yeah, let's just go. By the way, Ayaka Sprint consumes less stamina, goes faster, I suppose. And Yelan's E skill is... Real fantastic in terms of traveling distance as well. Even though it only lasts 3 seconds, but you can travel quite a long distance because of how fast it is. Which is good because I combine these two together and I can sprint very far. So let me just defeat these two guys. Oh yeah, I'm also playing at the highest graphical settings by the way. Where's that guy? So as you can see here, we're averaging somewhere around mid 40 FPS. So 40 something is the most that we can get here, which is actually quite okay, considering that we are running this game at the highest graphical settings and also the highest render resolution possible, uh, which is much higher than the tablet, I think. I can't really remember what I said in the review video, which you can watch at the top right corner there. But overall, the Fold series somehow has the highest render resolution which is gonna be really taxing in terms of performance. And just to show you guys, I was playing at the highest possible graphical settings. So graphics, uh, highest, 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 60 FPS. So there you go. I can definitely feel the back of this phone getting warm, especially the top side here beside the camera. That is where the chipset is located and no surprise that's where it gets hot. But uh, we'll take the temperature in a little while. So let me just find this block here. Oh, it's upstairs. Why did they hide it there? Uh, fun fact for you guys, Fontaine I think is based in France because as you can see the French architecture is Kind of obvious here. Yeah, we can see significant frame drop. That is where the thermal throttling happened. So yeah, we're only getting about 30 something FPS right now. And that is exactly what is happening when thermal throttling kicks in. So it rises a bit more back to about average about 40 something FPS right now. So that little dip in terms of frame rate is confirmed to be thermal throttling. So let me just head to the next waypoint first and then we'll take the temperature. Oh, dragon bone. Is that some kind of boss? Nah, not, not going for that now. We'll go there for the next device maybe. So let's just go to this waypoint. As you can see, another frame drop is happening. 
that is where thermal throttling kicks in so we are getting around 30 fps at most yeah so with that done let's take the temperature right now aha uh -huh. so the top side here is gonna be hotter because that's where the chipset is located and the surface temperature is around 40 degrees celsius which is still okay actually and at the bottom here it is much cooler because this is where nothing is located more like uh, i mean all of the heat producing elements are mostly beside the camera bump anyway so here we can see it's around 33 degrees celsius that's about it and at the back of the device let me go to the menu so i don't accidentally hit anything and uh, yeah we can see somewhere around 41 degrees celsius right now so i presume that inside the phone itself the temperature is going to be higher because it is thermal throttling anyways so the other parts of the phone remains real cool yeah the bottom of this half here is like 33 32 degrees celsius which is really low so all of the heat is trapped within this part here which is where the chipset is located and without proper cooling solution it cannot dissipate heat that fast and that is why we are seeing frame drops which is happening right now actually we're getting only 30 fps yeah that is why having a big vapor chamber for your phone is important so we we'll proceed with the next device um let's go with the Z Fold 5 because I do want to compare the performance a little bit with the Fold 4. Again, let me just take out the case on the phone. Okay, so with the case out of the way, I will show you my settings once again. Game Booster, Alternate Game Performance Management Mode turned on. And then for Game Plugins, uh, everything to the maximum. That's what I always do because I want the highest graphical render resolution into Genshin Impact and then we shall see. Again the render resolution is at 1920 by 1599 which is the same as the Galaxy Z Fold 4. So there is a small update. After updating we'll proceed to the game and see how it goes. Okay so now we are back in the game and as you can see here we are running the game at the highest graphical settings yet again. Highest, 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 highest 60fps. So yeah let's proceed by going to what's up here what is this beastly reef blah 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 yeah technically i just need to defeat everything and uh ensuring the crystal stays intact so this is a defense mission i suppose so let's do it Yeah, some of you guys might say that my team is kind of weird, but uh, fret not, this team is just for exploration currently, and uh, I'm also trying to level up Yelan, so I have to have her in my team anyway, so yeah. And Ayaka's sprint is so good that I'm kind of addicted to her speed actually, so I'm just gonna use her for now. Oh, even more stuff is coming. Great. Ah, they got hit out of the bounds, which is... I should have frozen them first. Are they more? Nice. Oh, we are dropping to below 40 FPS or somewhere around 40 FPS, which is surprising. Oh, challenge complete. 
And the reason why that it dropped is because the render resolution of the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and 4 in general is real high. Uh, higher than the Galaxy S23 Ultra by the way. So overall I would still say it doesn't thermal throttle. It kind of gradually drops down to the point that I actually realized that it is kind of stuttery. But uh, yeah, I got a notification there. This is my main driver anyway. Uh, yeah, in terms of performance, I would still say it's not the best, the Galaxy Z Fold 5. The higher render resolution really taxes the performance out of this phone quite a lot. So yeah, if you enjoy playing your games with such a big screen, then I would still recommend the Galaxy Z Fold 5 because you can do this. And surprisingly, uh, I think Genshin Impact actually is optimized for this. So let me just show you if I can go back to the game. Yeah, immediately resizes to this small screen. So, runs perfectly fine. And as you can see, the render resolution is even weirder right now. So, it's 2316 by 904 pixels. So, yeah, let's take the temperature right now. So, like what we mentioned earlier, the top half, not the top half, this, this back half here is where the chipset is located. This will be the hottest spot. And let's just, oh... And yeah, you can do that to Genshin Impact. It just resizes instantly, no problems at all. Let me just refocus a bit. Get the thermal cam in there. Uh, the hottest spot is around 42.5 degrees Celsius, 43 degrees Celsius, which is okay. Yeah, 43.5 is the highest that I can see here. So every other part is cooler than that. Let me just head into menu show you the back so yeah the hottest spot here is around 40 41 degrees celsius it is dropping quite a bit uh yeah as you can see here the overall hot spot this little orange area here is a lot bigger because the larger vapor chamber is found in the galaxy z5 as far as i know samsung said it's around 38 percent larger i suppose and that really helped to cool down the chipset quite a lot actually and overall temperature yeah, this all everywhere else is real low. Only this part is the hottest at around 30 something, nearly 40 degrees Celsius. Let's move on to oh, the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I think it's time, right? Okay, never mind that the S23 Ultra is updating. So we proceed with the Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra first, which is a humongous tablet that I don't know how to fit in frame. So you guys have to bear with me a while, I guess. The Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra that I got here is currently using the uh, default keyboard case, which comes with a kickstand, which is real good. So once again, render resolution is at 1730 by 1080, still not as high as the Galaxy Z Fold 5 or the Galaxy Z Fold 4 for that matter. So the performance on this tablet is definitely gonna be better than the Fold 5 because they're using the same chipset. But uh, because this has a lower render resolution, the GPU can keep up much better. So let's head into the game and see how it actually performs and what is the difference. Once again, I'm going to show you that I am running at the highest graphical settings. So high, 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 higher 60 FPS, blah, 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 all of that good stuff. So let's just proceed with the game. So I'm not sure where I should go now. Let's just head to the, this waypoint, I guess. We'll take the long route, the long scenic route, just to see how well this thing performs. So I should climb this. Yeah, Fontaine is real beautiful by the way. So as you can see, the city is in kind of a flat texture. And that is because, you know, when you are far away from something, they decrease it to become low poly mode. That is actually to save in terms of performance because if it's so far away, you're not going to see it anyway, so might as well make it low poly, right? That texture pop in, yeah, that, that's definitely in terms of game optimization issue. Why would they put an enemy at the cliff? Oh, enter, okay. 
We are really gonna take the scenic route then. So let's head to this waypoint as well. So what we're gonna do now is to head to the next waypoint and uh, as far as I can see the frame rate is still not gonna be 60 fps consistently. We are hovering somewhere around 50 to 55 depending on what kind of situation that we're in and uh, the reason why is because the render resolution is still rather high so yeah higher than the S23 Ultra for sure so that is definitely gonna cause more performance and let's just do this as well this is not my ideal team but I do need to level up Yelan so might as well Performance is real consistent though. Yeah, I'll show you my usual team when it comes to this game. Uh, I usually swap between my team 1 and team 2, which is... Uh, well, I can't do that apparently. I don't know why enemies in this game keep running into these kind of weird ass corners. I can't really catch up to them because the camera is gonna be fighting against me literally. So let me just show you my usual team here. Uh, I usually play this game using Team 1 and Team 2 which is uh, this, which I need to change this guy to Yelan. Yes, it's a guy, not a girl. And then here is my secondary team and uh, pairing these two together is excellent by the way. And uh, my third and fourth team is still currently building so I'm just gonna leave that be for now. And uh, I will use this team for now because, you know, exploration and whatnot. Okay, so we reached the waypoint and now it's time to take the temperature of the Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra. Uh, the temperature won't be high because this giant tablet is a giant heatsink so that chipset is definitely not gonna heat up at all. So let me just show you the temperature here. I need to readjust once more. We can see that the highest temperature is somewhere here, this part of the tablet here, this portion. So the temperature is somewhere around 36, 37 degrees Celsius, which is 
the maximum, actually the highest possible temperature that it can go and everywhere else is cooler than that so no point taking the temperature of those parts of the tablet and uh, the reason why the temperature is higher than I expected is because I got this case on so the entire back part of this tablet is blocked off because of this this case here so if we take it off and take the temperature behind the tablet it should be a lot lower too so let me just do that right now so yeah the hotter spot here is around 36 35 actually it's rapidly dropping because i just took out the back case here and everywhere else is really cool so no worries in terms of temperature at all so as you can see this is the blacksmith of fontaine and you can see the french architecture i suppose and it looks real amazing and yeah, this game on the Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra's massive screen really looks amazing. So there you have it. Performance, real good. We're getting somewhere near 60 FPS. That's just amazing. And uh, next up, the last one is the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I'm not sure if it has finished updated, so we'll return when it is finished updating. And thanks to the super fast performance of the Galaxy s23 ultra we have finished updating and also compile level all of the texture packs and whatnot so once again we are running this game at the highest possible graphical settings and render resolution as you can see here the maximum render resolution of the s23 ultra is 1853 by 864 that's it it is lower than the tab s9 ultra and obviously much lower than the fold 4 and the fold 5 so the performance on this phone is definitely going to be better than those two phones Actually, you know what, we'll just stay in Fontaine for a while and run around and see how this, the performance first. So yeah, this place is gorgeous, like what we said earlier. So yeah, we can see the frame rate is somewhere around 60 FPS, which is really near consistent 60 FPS. And I would say that's actually real good. So we'll just spin around here, walk around. Yelan, you're up. So yeah, we have nothing much to show around here, so let's head back out and run around. I'll head to this waypoint instead. We will again take the scenic route just to show you the performance of the S23 Ultra and also to stretch his chipset so that we can get the highest temperature possible out of this phone. I am using a screen protector that is a bit fancy. It wraps all the way to the back, so this will definitely trap some heat on the phone. So we'll head to that waypoint here. So let's, you know what? Ah, too bad. I thought of switching teams. I'm gonna move out of him soon, but anyway, they are all defeated, which is surprisingly fast, I guess, for an unoptimized team like this. Okay, we got some enemies there, let me just switch over to my usual team. That's gonna be better than this. So I'm gonna use team 2. Oh, okay, they are all dead. That was fast. So I'll continue run to the next waypoint. Yeah, the frame rate is dropping a bit. We're getting around low 50s high 40s low 50s kind of average fps which is i would say still good it's just not really that consistent i would say so let's head to this part here see what's up lots of puzzle not gonna deal with that right now so i'm just gonna head to the waypoint first 
Where is the waypoint, sir? There we go. So overlooking downwards, we can see the frame rate is somewhere around 50 FPS. And I can definitely feel it warming up a bit. So let's walk around some more before taking the temperature because I do want to stress this as most as I can. What was that? Oh, this thing is a bit tanky. That's good. Where is it? Yes, you did. You did get careless. So I guess I should go down. What is all this supposed to be? Okay, I need to get the fish skill. But where's the fish? There we go. There we go. So it's time to take the temperature now. Uh, I presume that this phone wouldn't get that hot as well because I really don't feel any thing behind the motor's real loud i really hate this neighborhood so we should take the temperature right now uh i should move further away okay so we can see the highest temperature is somewhere around this part which is still okay i would say 40 something 40 degrees celsius actually which is still real low compared to some other devices that we have tried like the Snapdragon 888 chipset that can reach about 50 something which is insane so yeah we get around 39.9 40 degrees celsius which is actually real good that's the highest temperature that i can see here oh no this is the highest so we can see somewhere around 41.5 i think that's where my finger was so it is definitely gonna be higher so yeah everywhere else is cooler if we look at the back of the phone though it should be this part that is the hottest so let's just do that right now and we can see that is indeed true at around 41 degrees celsius just now it is rapidly dropping to around 40.5 which is still okay i would say you will still feel some warmth on your hand but it's not gonna be burning and uh, I should add a disclaimer that my room is indeed air conditioned to 27 degrees Celsius. And yeah, that's the overall comparison between all of these devices on the new map Fontaine. So expect performance going to be affected a little bit. Uh, I would presume the M1 iPad Air is not going to be 60 FPS, but we don't have telemetry data anyway, so we can't really tell. And yeah, have fun at Fontaine everyone. This map is real gorgeous and the diving section is unique, I would say. So yeah, do give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because a lot of you guys have not subscribed and uh, it would really help us a lot. So we see you guys in the next video and uh, yeah, it's time to edit this video and then going back to play Fontaine. So yeah.